introductions are going to be from uh, Ilona Rogsa, who's director of ESPON, and uh, Laurent Frideris, who's head of unit of evidence and outreach for ESPON. So over to the two of you. Good morning, ESPON friends. Good morning, ESPON family. A very warm welcome to all of you to this ESPON seminar. Um, look at this, Laurent. We have gathered today more than 300 participants, and this is, I think, the first time when we have gathered that many people in the room for an ESPON seminar since the start of the program. We indeed are becoming very popular. Yes, and this is the first time we're organizing an ESPON seminar in Vienna. Uh, we really have to thank really have to thank the Austrian presidency for all their support in organizing this event. When you think about ESPON, what are the first keywords that come to your mind? It's probably data, indicators, maps, visions, scenarios, and here comes my favorite one, integrated place-based approach. I would also add stakeholders, networking, cooperation, and partnerships. Indeed. But in fact, in ESPON, it's even more than that. It's about real stories, experiences, and also good practices of places around Europe. And our mission within ESPON is to reveal these stories, to inform and inspire our stakeholders regarding the different solutions for promoting the development of places, and even more so, to help them learn from each other. Within our ESPON research activities, we have accumulated a large number of case studies that we can use as a basis for exchange, networking, and learning. These cases represent different governance levels, different challenges, and different solutions. So let us do a quick journey around Europe. So we start our journey in Wroclaw in southeast Poland, a vibrant city of 1.2 million inhabitants that attracts foreign investors thanks to its central location. But the cost of living is rising, and Rotslav wanted to remain an attractive destination for investors and for highly skilled workers. So the city focused on the quality of the services and offered them equally to foreign and domestic investors. And they also promoted stronger links between academia and business to develop the local talent pool. And they were successful. Uh, Rotslav today enjoys a higher GDP per capita and lower unemployment compared to the national average in Poland. Now let's move to an Estonian-Latvian cross-border area. Uh, North Livonia is a transboundary wetland area between Estonia and Latvia that includes three bordering Ramsar sites. So the question raised was how to improve the management of an area that exceeds the administrative borders. The border regions of South Estonia and North Latvia developed a common master plan for the area. The plan provides management guidelines and directions for green infrastructures. And the main outcome of the master plan was the establishment of the transboundary Ramsar site and also a number of national and also EU-funded uh, projects. And so now we move on to France. The four cities of Nancy, Metz, Thionville and Epinal are facing strong metropolitan influences from Paris, Strasbourg, and Luxembourg. And the four cities established a metropolitan pole, the sillon Laurent, to work on common interests and also to strengthen the metropolitan identity of the four members. The metropolitan pole developed cross-border mobility schemes, common advertising of the area as a touristic destination, and support to innovation and a digital economy. The sillon Laurent now moves on to drafting spatial schemes for the area. And now, let's continue with the, the cross-border area on the Austria and Czech border. So for Czech Velenice inhabitants in South Bohemia, the closest hospital is only 100 meters across the border in Gmünd uh, of Lower Austria. The problem was that Czech citizens treated in the Austrian hospital had to pay the costs themselves. Lower Austria and South Bohemia worked together in an interreg fund the program to offer cross-border healthcare services to Czech patients. Mm -hmm. And in 2017, 4,000 Czech patients were treated in Gmünd. Now the two regions are working on a reverse project for Austrian patients to have ra radiotherapies in Czech Republic. And now we move on to Italy. Abruzzo is a small Italian region. The, the 6.3 earthquake in 2009 destroyed the historical center of L'Aquila and interrupted the previously continuous growth of the region. 
Abruzzo wanted to reverse the economic decline and depopulation of the area. So the region used the fame of a national nuclear physics institute based in the area to establish the Gran Sasso Science Institute and attract international researchers. Yes, and the Gran Sasso Institute has quickly become the most international PhD school in Italy and created a positive spillover effect for the local economy. And finally, to Greece. Uh, after the migration crisis, uh, Greece needed accommodation solutions and also integration measures on a more permanent basis. The Greek state, together with the municipalities and a number of NGOs, set up a support mechanism to provide accommodation and counselling. The Athens municipality was assigned to deliver basic integration services. Mm -hmm. And despite some difficulties, migrants uh, succeeded to be hired after receiving certain counselling and also job uh, training uh, programmes. So the cases we presented today are only some examples to showcase that a territorial approach is not just a trend or fashion, it is a need, it's a precondition when designing development policies today. And Espon has many more examples to offer for your inspiration. President, President Juncker said at the opening of this year's European Week of Regions and Cities that Europe is every city and region, and we subscribe to that. The future of Europe is in the future of its places and the people living in those places, and we cannot afford neglecting their needs and their development perspectives. Places do matter, and no place should be left behind, and I'm sure our two brilliant keynote speakers of today will tell you more about it. So we wish you a very inspiring experience with us uh, in the course of the one and a half days and uh, a great networking experience altogether. Thank you very much and enjoy.